This is a magazine from 2002. I was around back then, but I wasn't keeping track with the tech world because I had other interests. Looking at the front, let's see, there's a Nokia phone. I believe this is one of the really early phones that had a, a built-in camera. So it was a pretty big deal back then. Winbook J4. I've never heard of that laptop before. It has a Pentium 4 in it. Actually, I believe that these processors were actually quite power hungry. Right, let me look it up really quick. Yeah, it seems like it's quite a bit of wattage, about 55 watts. So that's kind of a lot for a laptop, although there's still some newer ones that might have that. It was also pretty heavy. You can see it was a whole 8.6 pounds. So wow, that's, that's a pretty heavy laptop. And it had quite a lot of uh, power consumption. So this thing got pretty hot and it was pretty heavy. Um, although I guess the idea was that it was a desktop replacement. So, I mean, I guess if you're having desktop power in a laptop in 2002, it's going to be pretty heavy. That makes sense. And it's also quite ex expensive, but, you know, I mean, even the cheapest one, I mean, I don't know, that's pretty, pretty reasonable for the cheapest one. How much RAM did it have? It has one gigabyte of SD RAM. Is that the same as regular RAM? Or one gigabyte was pretty impressive considering that in the 90s you had computers with just eight megabytes of RAM. I have a compact. I'm not going to be going in detail on every page. I'm just going to stop at the pages that interest me the most. Oh, this is pretty thin. Pretty thin Toshiba. The other one was a Pentium 4. Well, this one's a Pentium 3. I'm guessing this is probably has less energy consumption. So it's probably able, probably a lot less powerful, but... But, you know, it's more about portability than performance. It had a 20 gigabyte hard drive. I mean, I guess back then that was, what, what was the, what was the other one? How big was the hard drive of the other one? That was, okay, so the other, the other WinBook had a 40 gigabyte hard drive, the most expensive one. So, I mean, a 20 gigabyte hard drive, I mean, 20 gigabyte hard drive was probably pretty decent back then. 2.6 pounds is pretty light for, I mean, that's even, I mean, that's like a modern laptop in terms of weight. And there's the HP Omnibook. For some reason, they have a bunch of people crammed into a car here. I don't know what they're doing there. Hmm. All right, there's this Dell Inspiron 4100. This one has a Pentium 3. I've noticed that Seems like most of the laptops so far are having Pentium 3s, while the first WinBook has a Pentium 4. Seems like the that Pentium 4 is just significantly more powerful and expensive. Oh, this, this pops out even further. Kind of a wacky design here. It's got like a this sort of circular edge. It's kind of bubbly. That's not how the early 2000s were. Everything was just kind of a, a bubbly design and that was that was the future in 2000 that was the future was bubbles in 2002 everything was going to be bubbly mm, here's a few few different miscellaneous items some some bubbly looking cameras here and we got this what is this a, a VCR it's a video walkman it's like the Sony Walkman of videos almost cost as much as some of the laptops actually one thousand three hundred dollars for this what, How much does a lap? I mean, I guess a laptop might not be very good for playing videos back then, but You could still do more with the laptop. Yeah, some of the laptops are here are cheaper. So I guess that's a that's a really good VCR And I don't know maybe a Pentium 3 Pentium 3 probably wasn't good enough to watch videos on, so it, it might have made sense back then if you really wanted to watch movies on the go. It's got a 480p resolution, but what does it mean? 
with an internet ideal resolution of 160 by 112. Does that mean the screen is higher resolution, but when you're connected to the internet, you can you get less of a resolution? I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Huh, this is kind of funny. So it seems like they were selling computer mounts in your car. I mean, I know, like, police cars have that, but was that something that was for consumers as well? Did Were there just, like, businessmen walking around with laptops in their car? I mean, I guess maybe back then it made more sense because it's not like you had smartphones back then, whereas, you know, if you're a, a business person guy, then you probably would need to have some decent computing power on the go and nowadays you, you know you can get that with your phone but back then i guess you if you had to you might have had to have a laptop for that so i mean oh well, maybe that made sense back then i don't i don't think i've ever seen someone well that wasn't a police officer to have one of those but that's kind of interesting mm, fujitsu laptop oh and this one had a pen yeah, a lot of Fujitsu laptops have um, had come with pens. I didn't know, didn't realize they would have sold some back then, but I guess that's pretty light. Had a touch screen. That seemed pretty, pretty advanced for back then, but I think the Fujitsu brand is, in general, just pretty underrated, although I'm not so sure about their build quality, so maybe build quality and reliability isn't quite as good as some of the other brands, like uh, Dell or... Um, IBM at the time. Oh, this is interesting. So this looks like a phone charger where it's like you can manually charge it by pushing this lever in and out and it would turn a generator in there and provide electricity. Wow, this, this laptop is crazy light looking. It actually looks very similar to a modern laptop. I mean, if you had to guess that this laptop was from 2002 i mean i mean this kind of looks like it could be from like this looks like it could be from 2017 maybe like i wouldn't be too hard to believe that this was a much newer laptop than it is except if you ignore the pentium 3 that is and it even has a 30 gigabyte hard drive which i mean seems like it was pretty impressive for back then so this was a pretty full-featured computer, as far as Pentium 3s go. Although the RAM is a little bit smaller than the others, because earlier we had... Earlier we had some with 500 megabytes and another with a gigabyte of RAM, so... For light computing on the go, I'm sure this was, this was fine for Windows XP. It says it has an AI flash bundle. Do they have, like, an AI package back then? What 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 kind of does it does it mean artificial intelligence or does AI stand for something else? It might stand for something else here. Oh, the iPod. Yeah, so this is the this is actually when the very first iPod came out. So this is this was back when Apple was really struggling financially, and they were. Uh, it was starting to seem like Apple was going to go bankrupt. And then they released the iPod, and that ended up being pretty popular. I think it was some of the later iPods that started becoming popular, but it was one of the earlier ones. I mean, it just had a, you know, a sort of a monochrome screen, and they had headphones that looked like the free ones you get from an airplane, but probably if it wasn't for the iPod, then I don't think the iPhone would have come out. I mean, it had a 5 gigabyte hard drive. It's kind of actually something interesting about the iPod is that it doesn't have, like, SD card storage. It actually had a mechanical hard drive in it. So, you know, that's kind of interesting. It was like a really tiny mechanical hard drive. Um, I think I watched a documentary about it a while ago. I forgot which one it was. The Ultimate Notebook. What is this? This is a Pro Star. Oh, and it's got a Pentium 4, so you know that that was packing some serious heat back from back in 2002. And it has dual dual drive. Wait, is it dual drives or 
I think this one has dual drives. I don't know. I don't know why there needs to be two of them, but I, I guess you can burn two CDs at the same time. I guess that's uh, could be useful for like five people. I've never heard of ProStar computers. I don't know what their what their computers entailed, but you know, it had a about a gigabyte of RAM, so you know that was. Uh, seems to compete with the earlier win book of the earlier pages, the earlier page. Huh. Seems like Microsoft Outlook cost quite a bit of money back then. I guess back then you didn't get as much free software with Windows or when you got your computer you didn't really get much free software. You really just had to pay for every bit of software. And that's kind of just how it was back then. Now you can just get Microsoft Outlook for free. Oh, it's been in the earlier pages of the magazine. It was mostly about the Intel processors with the Pentium 4 and the Pentium 3, but now we got an AMD processor with a peak bandwidth of 2.1 giga gigabits per second. Is that does that mean it's uh 2.1 gigahertz is that is that quite that should should mean the same thing right am i am i missing something here i might be i believe this is what would compete with the pentium 4 let me know if i'm wrong amd athlon 4 versus intel's pentium 4 hmm, seems to give some history about Intel processors here. I think back then it was mostly Intel that dominated the PC market. Um, I don't think there was as many businesses buying AMD processors. Another laptop from a brand I never heard of. Never heard of MTech laptops. Oh, we got a ThinkPad here. We got the what is it? The IBM ThinkPad R31. Seems like they're showing it just sort of floating in the air. Kind of like how they do with their newer commercials, but you know, it wasn't, they're doing it with light laptops, whereas this one was, well, I guess this one was kind of heavy, but seems like they didn't have the any track point at that time. They were just using the track point. I actually haven't heard too much about the R31. Probably because not many people use them anymore, but seems like it had a Celeron. There was a Celeron processor, Pentium 3, Pentium 3, Pentium 3, Pentium 3, Pentium 3. So we didn't really have any uh, Pentium 4s, and at least not in this particular line of ThinkPads, but it was back before, back before Lenovo had purchased think, the ThinkPad brand. That was back when uh, IBM was leading... That was back when it was owned by IBM. And we have a IBM desktop as well. I think at this time, um, IBM was starting to lose its market and there was more, um, I think Dell PCs were a bit more popular at this time. But I could be wrong on that. I mean, I was, I was uh, busy with other things back then. Okay, here's some other odds and ends. I'm just going to kind of go through these briefly unless I see this something that's uh, very interesting to me. You have the uh, iPack Pockets. Huh. It's like a like a little portable computer. Of course it's a uh, you know it's not quite a smartphone but it's uh it's like a little portable computer. It seems uh you know, not powerful but it can do some things. It's like a mini version of Windows, but it's not it's not the same as Windows, so I mean, don't know exactly how popular those were, but it, was, it, seems, it seems like a pretty interesting piece of tech, like kind of like a precursor to the smartphone, except I don't think this was used for a phone, but... Hmm, the Sager laptop seems similar to the other laptop I was seeing. It's got the two disk drives there. They've got actually quite a few pages on this. I've never heard of, never heard of Sager. Don't know if I'm saying that right. There's a couple pages on this laptop. It's got the Pentium 4 in it. We got the 
bubbly looking design here as per the early 2000s. Even the most expensive one is still cheaper than the wind book. Wow, four hours of battery life with a Pentium 4? Hmm, how is that even possible? Did anyone actually achieve that? Anyone ever, ever get four hour battery life with a Pentium 4 laptop? And we got a Game Boy, a GPS, Research in Motion Blackberry. What is this for? Access email while on the road. We got some important looking business people here doing some important looking business things. This guy's got his phone with his laptop. He looks like he's doing something really important. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this, this is an early smartphone or PDA slash cell phone. It is pretty interesting. This is a, it's a pretty much a Samsung Galaxy. It uses Palm OS. I've never used Palm OS, so I'm not exactly sure what all it can do, but um, that, that seems like a, seems pretty interesting. I don't know how popular those were. Toshiba Bluetooth card. Hmm, smart card. So yeah, there were some computers that have smart cards and actually smart cards are still used today by some businesses, so. Various different laptops here. Got a GPS. Another laptop brand I've never heard of. I've never heard of a Chembook. It's got a wireless LAN card and antenna. So I guess you can use internet. Interesting. Another laptop brand I've never heard of. I've never heard of Fosa, Fosa laptops. Some miscellaneous PC accessories. We got another ThinkPad here, an S, an S30. Seems like a, actually that's pretty light for a ThinkPad. Well, for a ThinkPad that is. They have a even lighter Toshiba's and I didn't even know I didn't even know that Sharp made computers actually. Sharp is that is that the brand Sharp? I have a I have a Sharp microwave actually from the same year. I didn't know they were making laptops back then. Ultra portable computing. We got a Lotus Esprit Turbo there. It's a nice car. It's a Microflex. I've actually, I've never heard of Microflex either. But this one did come with an AMD in it. So AMD Mobile Athlon 4. And then we had some Pentiums as well. We got some PDAs, some bags. This seems to be a game console or mobile. A little mobile game set or something. Hmm. Some more wacky bubbly designs here. I'm not really that interested in PDA, so sorry if I fly by these pretty fast. Geez, I swear this laptop has been advertised like five times in this. I swear this lap, the same laptop has been advertised like five times in this magazine. They really, really push in this ultimate notebook experience here. Oh, they got the, so this, this was a really fancy magazine. You can fly in a private jet. Oh. And you have your laptop desk designed specifically for your private jet. Wow, this is for really fancy people. I feel like I'm not supposed to be, not supposed to be looking at this because I'm not, I'm not that fancy. Oh, wow. Have a couple of other laptops here. Seems like there's this other ThinkPad. Some other what kind of ThinkPad was eight hundred dollars. What did that have? It had a Pentium three. They still all have Pentium threes in them, so except maybe a Celeron in there as well. Hmm. 
You got another car desk there. A lot of different cameras and PDAs and laptops. Some more laptop brands I've never heard of. PC Club, ENP, and the and the System Max Pursuit. I don't know what a System Max is, but there you go. Oh, I did see another chem book earlier. There's some different some different reviews here. I probably won't be going into too much detail about these. An M Tech laptop. Oh, here's another Pentium 4 laptop. Let's see, what's this? This is called an E Power. I feel like E Power is kind of familiar, but I don't I don't know too much about E Power. Had a 40 40 gigabyte hard drive. And it's pretty cheap compared to the other, and it's pretty cheap compared to the other Best Buy computers. We have another laptop brand I've never heard, another laptop brand I've never heard of, Ashton Digital, and they say it's built for your lap. Mm, I wonder how comfortable that actually was. That's the end of it. I did go through it pretty quickly, although I'm on a pretty limited time, and I did have, and I did start two other videos this week, but they're going to take more time than anticipated. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I hope you have a nice day.